us today. Bellator's Blair Tugman, who's going to be fighting next weekend, CT's own Blair Tugman. What's going on, Blair? How are you doing? Good. How's it going, Eddie? Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Thank you for stopping in. I know it's such a selfish sport. You got this fight going on next weekend at Mohegan Sun. What are you doing today? I saw that you're out and about at the training or exercising. What are you up to this morning? Yeah, so I uh, get up, uh, usual routine, 7 o'clock, and then I uh, head over to the gym around 8 and broke a sweat and just kind of get my weight down and feeling good and ready to go for next weekend. Yeah, so now it's a week away. Is it starting to feel real now all of a sudden? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's real when you sign on the dotted line. Yeah. So, uh, But yeah, as it gets closer, you, you, you start to feel it a little bit more, and, and I'm excited. You know, you get more and more excited as it gets closer to compete. And anyone that's in Connecticut that's interested in going to Bellator, uh, do you still have tickets for sale that they can reach out to you or? Yeah, definitely reach out to me. I mean, I've been selling a ton. I've, I probably have sold a, like 140 tickets so far and uh, I'd like to sell 60 more and get the 200. So if people want to come, please contact me and uh, we'll get you out there. And it's been such a big year. Before we start about your fight, I want to get your take on you know, Bellator signing some of these bigger names out there. Of course, people view the UFC as the place that you want to get, but now you're seeing a lot of big names signing to Bellator, which kind of evens the playing field out. Uh, does this kind of um, make you set back and be like, I already am where I want to be. I don't really necessarily need to get to the UFC. W what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I mean, Bellator is doing an unbelievable job uh, signing all these guys and bringing in great talent, uh, young talent and old talent. So mm -hmm. it's it's pretty cool to see what they're doing as far as bringing in guys like Fedor, Mitrione, and, and guys like that. Um, as far as me, I'm not I'm not where I want to be yet. I want to yeah. be at the top, um, but uh, I am happy being able to fight for an organization like Bellator. Uh, so uh, I'm obviously very excited to fight for them and compete for them every time they ask me to. And you've trained with some of the uh, UFC's top talent, like Cody Nolov, uh, TJ Dillashaw, yeah. and those two are about to go at it. Uh, yeah. What's your thoughts on that? I mean, that that's an interesting uh, – there's so much going on there with the story and everything, and you've got to train with them. Well, what's your take on yeah. the season, man? Yeah, I've been very lucky and fortunate to be able to train with these two guys uh, <laughs> uh, on two separate occasions. So I'm excited for the fight. I think it's going to be awesome. Uh I, I like Cody a lot. Uh, I, I built a little bit of a relationship with him the two times I went out to Alpha Male. Uh, Dillashaw I trained with once, but uh, I, I didn't get as close to him as I did with Cody. So I'm kind of rooting for Cody. Uh, I want to see him uh, handle his business and do his thing, but uh, I'm, I'm just excited for a great fight. It's going to be awesome. So do you think Bellator should kind of bring it back? They got the Spike platform. They did something in the past with like a reality kind of uh, a thing with like Joe Riggs ended up winning it. Do you think Bellator should pick up on that reality show side to pick up some of more of the casual fans out there? Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's a bad idea. I think it definitely draws in some fans that you normally wouldn't get uh, just watching the sport typically because it brings in that reality show type uh, feeling and setting. So uh, we actually have a girl that I train with, Marissa, Marissa. Uh, uh, Spider Monkey, uh, and we're trying to get her involved in the UFC uh, reality show coming up here soon. So hopefully she gets on the show and she's going to do some big things. And, uh, and she's a girl to watch out for for sure. Yeah, if you guys don't know about Marissa, I'll share her. Uh, I'll share her profile after this interview. You should definitely keep your eye on this girl. Uh, Andrew's done an amazing job making sure that she's strong in every area between her jujitsu, wrestling, and everything. Uh, and they've been training together forever. And of course, yeah. Andrew, he's another Bellator fighter. Last time we spoke, he was trying to get back into it, but he had a an injury. What's, what's going on with Andrew right now? Uh, yeah, so he, he's kind of overcoming a couple uh, uh, injuries, and uh, he's slowly getting back into training. I, I don't think he's done competing yet. I could still see him uh, stepping out there and, and competing if the opportunity presents itself. Um, he's slowly getting back into good shape and things like that. He's, he still trains and works out with us daily. Uh, and he's a student of the sport. The guy's constantly studying and um, staying on top of it, which makes him an unbelievable coach. And, and, and us as uh, his athletes makes us very lucky to train with him. You also have your own gym, uh, Team Tugman. How's that going for you? Oh, man, my, my wrestling club, Team Tugman, is doing an unbelievable job. Uh, we have some amazing athletes coming through there, youth through high school, um, kids and high school kids uh, competing nationally and, and doing very well nationally, uh, and it continues to grow. And 
you know, team tugging is something that, that motivates me. The kids, seeing them work so hard and, and uh, helping them reach their goals motivates me to be a better person, a better coach, a better athlete. And it's just an all around amazing experience for me. So uh, if you're ever interested in coming down, checking out Team Tugman Wrestling Club, make sure you do it. Some of the best kids in the country train there. Is that in, that's in Brantford? That's in Brantford, yep. Right. Right in Brantford. We get kids from all over the state, though. Uh, they travel from all over. We even get guys for, from New York and New Jersey coming up to train with some of our guys. That's how that's how good these kids are. Um, yeah. Matter of fact, I'm doing the interview right now in Brantford, Connecticut. So we got a lot of local guys. You guys should definitely go check out uh, Team Tugman. Of course, you can check out Blair's profile and, and find out exactly where those uh, where the directions are, where the address is. But Blair, let's jump into your fight, man. You're four out of five in your last five fights. You're on a two-fight win streak right now. You're getting the uh, motivation behind you with the local scene. There's a lot of people coming to see you. Um, so yeah. I got to ask you this. What do you know about Tom Linglitz? What are we in for, the people that don't know Tom that well? What kind of a fighter yeah. is he? Yeah, Tom fought on the last card I fought on back in November. He fought my buddy and training partner, Chris Foster, uh, who I train with daily. He's on this card too, right? Yeah, Chris is fighting as well. Uh, he's fighting Manly, I believe, who's uh, got a wrestling background. But Tom, Tom's a veteran. He's fought some really tough fighters, some guys that uh, I, I believe have fought in the UFC. Um, and, and then he recently fought Chris, who's a very, very talented kid too. So he's a scrappy dude. He's a headhunter. He throws some pretty big, heavy shots, and I think he looks for KOs. Um, I think he has a wrestling background, but I, I don't know if he uses it too much. He just swings for the fences, so he's a brawler. Uh, so it should be interesting. Do you see this fight playing out a certain way in your head? Some fighters don't like answering that, but of course, you got to see it some way. How, how do you? How do you see that? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I tell my wrestlers and my athletes all the time, you got to visualize every night before bed, and it's something that I do personally. And I've seen it play out a million different ways, but every every way, it, it, my hand gets raised at the end. But um, I really am excited to, to you know, uh, showcase some of my striking skills. Uh, I think I've jumped levels every fight as far as that goes. Um, Andrew continues to, to work in a lot of different uh, techniques and, and skills that I've, I think I have uh, possessed through tons and tons of training and drilling and shadowing and sparring. And I really want to showcase those, those striking skills. And then, you know, eventually I know I, I, I am a much better ground fighter than than Tom is. I, I am highly confident in my ground skills. I train at Marcelo Garcia's in, in North ha or, uh, uh, New York, uh, the, the greatest grappler to ever grace the mats. So I train with his top level black belt world champions uh, once a week, and I'm going toe to toe with those guys. So going into this fight, I know if it hits the ground, I am going to dominate. Who, who's at that uh, Who's at that gym right now that you've been working well, with? working with yeah, Daniel Daniel Dennis and Munch they just got suspended yeah, yeah. <laughs> what you what you know mm -hmm. uh Johnny Grippo I get to train with um uh, who's a black belt world level guy uh there's a ton of there's a ton of, of Pan Am and world champs brown belt through black that I get to, to work out with but Munch is one of the guys that I was uh consistently working with uh, uh Johnny Grippo and there's a couple other guys down there um that are like high level purple belt, brown belt type guys that, that I get to train with on a daily basis. So it's every time you go down there, it's, it's really good training as far as the grappling goes. So Dylan, man, he's in a tough situation right now. Any word of advice to him if he's listening right now? <laughs> I mean, I don't know if I'm in a, in a place to give Dylan Dennis uh, advice. I, I don't know if I agree with some of his tactics off the mat. Um, I know what he's doing it for, you know, and I know he's buddies with Connor and, 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 and it's worked well for Connor, obviously. Um, but that's not my style to, to act and, and, and portray that type of person. But if it gets him paid and it gets him where he wants to go, then all for it. But uh, I, I give Marcelo Garcia credit for saying not my not my gym. That's not how you're going to act. So yeah. I, I, I respect that a lot out of Marcelo. Well, I was just speaking with Steve Cazola, who just was on uh, last week's Bellator card, and he was trying to call him out. I mean, if Dylan does come in uh, soon, who would you like to see him matched up against? I mean, I think Steve Cazola would be a, a great matchup for him. Yeah, I mean, being that he has no MMA yeah, experience, he's 0-0, yeah. and, um, and he's getting all this hype and publicity, you know, it, it does get annoying to some guys that have been around for a long time and put their time in. 
yes, he is world level jujitsu, but MMA wise, he's he's zero and zero, man. So I think he needs to earn his way up to the top a little bit more than what 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 they're giving him. They're giving him a pretty big opportunity right off the bat. But I don't know. I, I think that would be a great matchup for him. The first match, see where he stands. Yeah, he's he's uh he's got a future ahead of him, man. Uh, everyone's talking about Dylan, even though he does have that 0-0 record. It's kind of cool to see these stories unravel as an outsider, you know, in the sport. See this, uh, see it's been a crazy 2016, and now 2017. It's been more of a controversial year. Uh, you know, what what are your thoughts on on this year in, in a whole right now, 2017, as we uh stand here Easter morning? Uh, anything could happen in the sport of MMA. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Um, I'm excited for 2017 and what, what's coming. Uh, there's a lot of great fights, a lot of great matchups coming up. Like you said, Dillashar Garbrandt's awesome. I'm excited for the reality show itself, just to mm -hmm. kind of see how they interact together. I've already saw some previews of them getting after it, uh, which should be pretty interesting. Uh, the women's divisions continue to grow and build, which I think is huge for our sport. Um, so I'm excited about that. And, uh, and I'm, I'm really excited about the Fedor, uh, uh, Mitrione, and MSG. That's going to be pretty cool. That's what I was about to bring up to you. Bellator has been having an amazing year. I called it last year. I was like, Bellator is looks like they're in the, the going in the right direction, signing a lot of these big names. Uh, who, who are you favoring in the Matt Mitrione versus Fedor fight? That's a, such an interesting matchup. Definitely, definitely is. I mean, Matt's a, he's a tough out, but uh, Fedor is the legend, so... Uh, <laughs> It's hard to pick against Fedor. Um, I know he's been around for a very long time, but I, I, I think I'm going to lean towards him and uh, his experience and, and just his overall toughness and the guys he's fought throughout his career. I mean, the guys fought the who's who of MMA. So uh, I, I'm excited. I'm just excited to see that fight. It's going to be amazing. I wish I was on that darn card. Yeah, in, in New York. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're so local. Um, you know, yeah. what, have you been seeing any changes backstage with Bellator, you know, bringing in these guys, uh, you know, some of the bigger names, has anything kind of, uh, bonded you guys a little more as a, as a company to work together? Uh, no, I, I think, I, yeah, I think Bellator has been very consistent throughout the time that I've, I've, uh, fought for them. They've been, they, they treat us very well, mm -hmm. um, from top to bottom, you know, they're, they're top guys to their, to their lower level guys or not lower level, but our prelim guys. I think they treat us very fairly. Um, and, and, uh, they put on a great show and every time I fight for them, I feel privileged. So they do a great job in, in the way they treat our, treat the fighters. So before we let you go here, man, what can everybody expect when they come to see you this Friday, uh, April 21st at Mohegan Sun? Yeah, they, they can expect to see the best version of myself. I know I say it every fight, but I believe it uh, 100% that I, I every time I step in there, I'm a better version of myself previously. So um, they're going to see uh, the best Blair Tugman they've ever seen. That's all I got. I mean, I'm looking to finish inside two rounds. If, if I don't finish Tom with inside two rounds, I'm going to be pissed at myself. How's this weight cut going for you? You said at the beginning of the interview you feel all right. Uh, you know, how much more do you have to go? I'm right on track, man. I, I worked out this morning a little bit. I just walked on the treadmill for an hour, and I'm within 10 pounds. So I'm, I'm like, right on the button. I'm, I'm good to go. You yeah. know, I, this is way easier than making 35, let me tell you that. Well, is your girlfriend hiding uh, all the Reese's on you? Because it is Easter. <laughs> uh, you can find as of now, the no, <laughs> no Reese's for me now. No, definitely not. Blair, thank you so much for coming on Pure Evil MMA. What we like to do at this point in the interview is to hand the imaginary microphone over to you if you have any shout outs, any sponsors, anything that you want to get out there to our audience that you want to say, uh, a message to your opponent, wishing them luck, anything at all. The floor is all yours now. Yeah, Tom, let's just put on a good show, man. Let's have a great battle on the 21st and give everybody a, a really good show. And, and um, I would like to thank my coach, Andrew Calandrelli, all my teammates at Ultimate MMA for helping me and pushing me throughout my, my training camp and my career. My family, mom, dad, my two brothers, Blake and Brad, uh, for always loving and supporting me and everything I do. Uh, my sponsors, Bad Boy. Uh, thank you for hooking me up with some sweet gear and clothing. My manager, Gerald Groob, thank you for hooking me up with this fight and giving me this opportunity. And all my team Tugman friends and family that come out to support me and, and watch me kick some ass on April 21st. I appreciate it. And thank you, Eddie, for, for taking the time to interview me and, and, and uh, doing what you do for the sport of MMA. I really appreciate it. 
Thank you so much, Blair, for coming on Pure Evil on Mag. Before we let you go, man, we just want to wish you the best of skill come this weekend. We'll be there supporting you, brother. All right. Thanks, brother. I appreciate it. Happy Easter Sunday. Thanks. You too.